Hi everyone and welcome to our sixth lesson in our English reading GCSE series. Um, if I say anything stupid today, I apologize. I think I have COVID, which kind of sucks. Um, but I, you know, I wanted to still put out this lesson because whether I'm ill or not, your exams are still coming up, right? So um, apologies if I'm a bit dopey today. Maybe you think I'm dopey every day, I don't know. But um, but I'll do my best to still do this lesson. It might end up being just very slightly shorter than usual, but um, we're going to be covering effectively language analysis questions today. So if you're saying AQA, um, that would be language uh, paper one, question two, and language paper two, question three. Uh, if you're sitting uh, Cambridge or Edexcel or OCR, there are several language questions in those papers as well. Apologies for my phone going off. Um, but if you haven't uh, checked out this series before, we are going through all different areas of the reading section of your language GCSE. So what I mean by that is it's like comprehension questions, language analysis questions, structure analysis questions, evaluation questions, comparative questions, all that good stuff. So uh, in the five weeks preceding this, we've gone through language analysis, word class analysis, structural analysis, ideas, perspectives, thoughts and feelings, comprehension versus analysis versus evaluation. And today's lesson, we're going to be starting, as I say, how to plan out these more language analysis questions. So if you haven't seen the first lesson, which was on how to analyze language, I recommend you check that out. And that will pair well with this lesson today. But we're going to do a bit of a language analysis today anyway. So this is the 2020 paper for AQA. Now, if you aren't AQA, please don't be put off. Like a lot of what I'm going to talk to you about today is exactly the same as what you would do for the other exam boards as well. Now, the reason that is, you might not know this. I'm obviously I'm a bit of an exam nerd because I'm an English teacher. Um, so the government sets the standards for the exam papers. So just because um, just because uh, you're sitting AQA or Edexcel or OCR or whatever, the government still sets like you have to include these questions and these standards and these things. So regardless really of whichever, um, whichever paper you're sitting, there will be some language analysis as part of what the government sets as part of what you should be learning in English language. So um, yeah, we're gonna read this short extract. So most of the language analysis questions in all exam boards are what we call close analysis, close analysis questions. And so normally it's sort of five to 10 lines that you have to go quite deeply into. Now, um, the other thing is, if you haven't checked out the second week, the word class analysis video would also be good for you because what you're doing in the language questions generally is not just looking at language devices like metaphors and similes and juxtaposition, alliteration, all that stuff, but also word choices too. So we're going to read this together. I'm going to generate a few ideas, but the way I would plan for this question. So the question is, how does the writer use language to describe the garden? So what I'm going to be trying to do as I read is coming up with a few different points of how the garden seems to be described. Right. So every time I'm getting a piece of evidence, it might go. There might be several bits of evidence that seem to do the same thing or there might be you know, one bit of evidence that points to one thing about the garden and another bit of evidence that links to another thing about the garden. So I'm just, I'm just trying to map that out as I read a little bit. Now, for AQA at least, and I think for most of the other exam boards, um, you can't spend that long planning this, okay? So I'm actually gonna try and do this in about five minutes. Now, in some of my other videos, like my poetry videos and stuff, I literally physically put up a timer. I'm not going to do that today just because it's a bit of faff and mucking around. So just let's try and do this within no more than five minutes, though. So we've read the question. We know it's about how the garden is being described. Then we're going to read this little extract and we're going to try and find ideally sort of four to six bits of word choices and language devices that describe the garden as something. Right. And that's the other thing you could just in your mind have written down before you start, you could have garden described as X, garden described as Y, garden described as Z. That's when you know I'm still British, even though I live in America, because I say Z, not Z, like the Americans. 
also British people basically don't use Z, right? Like, you know, in American English, you've got like analyze and realize and um, whatever, like, uh, uh, why am I black? Well, this is how you know I'm ill. I can't think of a third word. This is American English, right? Whereas we hate Z. We have it in our alphabet, but we never use it because we're analyze, realize with an S. Anyway, I'm chatting nonsense. Maybe I've got a fever. <laughs> so let's read this thing and let's find some, some good evidence. So Rosie had made a quick check of the unfamiliar garden before letting the children go out to play. So straight away in this first bit, we get this sense of the garden being mysterious and unknown, yeah? So I don't know how good this quote will be relative to some of the other quotes that we find, but we can say the garden is described as mysterious and unknown. It'd be great if I could type today. Okay, so unfamiliar garden. The bottom half of the garden was an overgrown mess, a muddle of trees and shrubs. Okay, cool. So this bit here is imagery. Uh, so unfamiliar, that's an adjective. The garden here is described as, as you know, wild and mess, mm, wild and uh, untended. You can see that here, an overgrown mess, a muddle of trees and shrubs. And this is uh, imagery. So as you're going through the quotes, as well as you're planning it, I would try your best to work out whether it's a word choice and what that word class is, noun, adjective, adverb, so on, or whether it's a language technique, so metaphor, simile, imagery, whatever, yeah? An ancient mulberry tree stood at the center. Its massive twisted branches drooped to the ground in places, its knuckles in the earth like a gigantic malformed hands. Okay. So um, it's knuckles in the earth like a gigantic malformed hand. That is personification. And I think that that is a separate point as well. So I think that this one, uh, personification, it suggests that the garden is described as being alive uh, and uh, being alive and uh, and uh, how do I would say this? Describe as being alive and um, old, yeah? So the other thing would be the word choice ancient. And obviously that is just another adjective. So it's old and alive. And then when you then think about the fact that his knuckles are like a big malformed hand, maybe it suggests the age as well, because sadly, as people age, they tend to like get, unfortunately, things like arthritis or other conditions that can make, you know, I, I'm thinking about my own granddad, sadly, like before he passed away, one of his hands, because of arthritis, just got more and more closed up. So his hand was kind of like this and he couldn't, he couldn't open it, unfortunately. It was really sad. And that's actually happening to my current nonno, that's Italian granddad. He's also got like a, a malformed hand, sadly, because as he's aging, the arthritis and other, you know, things going on with his body, I guess, are like, you know, closing his body down. Anyway, so uh, that's the imagery there. So you've got ancient and you've got the malformed hands, personification. The wintry sun hung low in the sky and the gnarled growth through long twisted shadows under across the undergrowth within its cage. So this bit here, you've got the gnarled growth through long twisted shadows. So again, this is imagery, but this imagery I think maybe could change our first point. So never be married to your ideas. Like your ideas might change as you go through and that's totally fine. So the garden is described as mysterious and intimidating. And we see that through the gnarled growth, so the alliteration and also the twisted shadows. So you've got alliteration and you've also got um, connotations or symbolism. Symbolism of twisted shadows is very sinister. The trunk of the tree was snarled with the tangled ivy that grew up through the broken bricks and chunks of cement choking it. 
So the tangled ivy grew up through the broken bricks. So again, this is really uh, imagery. Um, I would say you could probably talk about the, uh, the verb choices though here as well as adding to wild and untended, right? So tangled ivy, broken bricks. So wild, untended and uncared for, we might add in, yeah? So you've got the verb choices. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, verb, verb choice and broken is adjective again. Now, we'll finish reading it just in case there's anything else, but that is technically all done. And hopefully that took less than five minutes. Um, so the path that led down towards the fence of the bomb, which marked the garden off from an orchard beyond, disappeared into a mass of nettles and brambles before it reached the padlocked door. So a mass of nettles and brambles, you could also definitely talk about that if you wanted to, as part of it being wild and untended. So you could actually have three bits of evidence here if you wanted to. Wait, that's not right. That's the bit I wanted. There we go. Cool. That's it. So that's how you plan for question twos. You, as you're reading it, take your time, take in the language, take in the word choices, work out what they're saying about how something's being described or presented, yeah? And now that we've done that, we have three really good paragraphs that we can unpack and turn into a model. Um, so let's do that. Let's, let's do that to finish up. We'll do one model paragraph. Um, and depending on which uh, exam board you're sitting, you want to be spending probably no more than about five minutes on actually writing these paragraphs as well. So it is an analysis, so you do need to break down the language and you know that does take a little bit of time. But as long as you have picked out good ideas and you understand how they create the garden being described as something, it should be pretty easy to write a paragraph. So I don't know which one we should do. Let's go with the first one because uh, actually, you know what, no, let's do, let's do the, uh, let's do the third, uh, second one, just because it's a bit longer, so you can see what you can get to. So one of the ways in which the garden is described is as wild and untended and uncared for. We see this in the quote, an overgrown mess, a muddle of trees. As the imagery of this uh, sentence conveys a garden which has been left to grow wildly without any gardening at all. The muddle of trees also suggests that this garden is thriving in its own wilderness. Uh, secondly, the quote, tangled ivy uh, or the quotes, I'll put these together, tangled ivy and broken bricks, suggests the wildness of the garden, since if something is tangled, it is not well organized, and uh, the broken bricks so that there is also some neglect in the garden and that it has not been well cared for. Finally, the mass of nettles, oh, adds to this same impression that the garden is Tended. Brambles are uh, particularly painful. Uh, brambles and nettles are particularly painful for anyone in a garden. And so 
mass shows there you go okay cool so that is that hopefully took less than five minutes let's see yeah i think it took a bit less than five minutes and it's that's basically what you're trying to do you're going from one quote to the next to the next it's 167 words for the eight mark question in AQA, I would recommend you do two paragraphs of this length in that time. So that should take you about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, if you have a longer question with more marks, like the question three of paper two for AQA, then ideally three paragraphs, that might take you about 15 minutes. Either way, you wanna spend about five minutes per paragraph, like I just did. You don't have to go crazy deep into the analysis, like I showed here, you just need to kind of Make sure that you are breaking down some of the language and some of the connotations of the language and how it proves your point, whatever your point is. So notice that every quote I brought in, I brought it back to how it was either wild or untended or uncared for as a garden. And as long as you're doing that, you won't be going too far wrong. Um, so you can apply this same principle to any piece that you look for. What I would say is uh, one final thing I would say, sorry, which I didn't actually mention as I was doing the plan, but just make sure that there is a little bit of diversity in your ideas, right? So if you've put an adjective or a word choice as your first point, maybe try and have a language device as your second point, right? Uh, if you've got imagery for your first point, try not to have imagery again for the second point, try and do something different. So every single one of these um, quotes that I picked is showing off to the examiner one thing that I know from language or word choices. I'm showing the examiner and I know the different word classes and I can analyze how those word classes are used to describe the garden. I'm also showing that I know a few different um, language devices. So I'm not just doing metaphors or just doing alliteration or just doing personification or whatever. I'm doing a diverse range. So make sure that you do that in your piece. Don't have too much of the same stuff. That would not go well. Um, other than that, I think that's everything really from today's lesson. So I hope that was helpful. These lessons where we go into planning and just diving in will probably be a little bit shorter because, you know, I, I've told you how to analyze, now I'm telling you how to plan. Um, so yeah, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please do comment down below or question down below and I will answer. I've had a few great comments and I've been answering those. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, I will catch up with you in the next video. So thanks very much for joining.